Our gospel reading today is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how it happened. There was conversation around words like vision and engage and culture. That's what the people with me, Scott Stoddard, Mary Ashmore, Allison Muller and Sam White, Kitty Tarleton, Ted Gentry, and William Crawford. That's the conversation we had together in 2002. It's the vision they talked about. We discussed what, my, what God might be doing with music at Westminster Presbyterian Church. It was providing opportunities for music to be a part of this community. But looking back, it wasn't about music really at all. It was about encouraging ways for people to respond to God's revelation in this place. It just so happened that it was through small choir rehearsals that became big choir rehearsals, or through the music that Nancy Smith draws from that organ or from this baby grand piano each week, or the amazing sound of our voices together singing as a congregation that we've drawn close enough to hear God's voice among us. And almost 20 years later, those melodies have grown stronger and the voices in the chorus have multiplied so that it's hard to imagine this community in this place without a soundtrack. Our minds, our habits reinforce that ideal so much that when it's removed, when we can't hear the music any longer, our grief tells us this might not be the same place. When we've experienced God's presence and come so close to God's kingdom here on earth, as we might imagine in heaven, it's hard to step away without mourning a bit. Our longing for God's way, even if we've only caught a passing glimpse, minimizes all the other possibilities. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak. In both Matthew and Luke's gospel, Jesus teaching the Beatitudes is preceded by the calling or the choosing of the 12 disciples. And then the crowd gathers, and it continues to come. So Jesus retreats up the mountain, and his disciples follow. And there, it's as if they had their first visioning meeting together, where Jesus says, look, this is how it's going to be. This is what we are about. It's not the way of the world that we are going to proclaim. It's not a culture of strength and dominance and corruption. 
But do you know who will be at the center of my kingdom? The poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, for they have seen God. They've gone up the mountain and they've learned to walk in God's path. They've lived in that world as Isaiah prophesied, the peaceful kingdom, where with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity the meek of the earth. Christ says to the disciples, this is who we are. This is what I'm calling you and the world to be. And if you look further into the Gospels, Christ then goes on to preach to the people, to teach through parables. The kingdom of God is like Christ shares the vision inviting all to be blessed. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness. They shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. And these people have seen the vision. They know what it is to be a part of the kingdom. And arching through all of these characteristics of the Beatitudes, through each of the qualifiers, is being in communion with God. The Beatitudes are often paralleled by the gifts of the Spirit, or as St. Augustine taught, the petitions in the Lord's Prayer, how Christ taught us to pray. Our unity with Christ comes not from what we do, but how we model and reflect the nature of Christ. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And when we are separated from communion with God because of the way we treat one another or because of the way we treat God's world, the ways we fail to reflect God's will here as it is in heaven, then we can truly mourn. We mourn a fallen world, not just in sorrow and repentance, but we mourn as we recognize the loss of the true good, the image of God in human nature. Augustine even pair, or paired the phrase, your will be done from the Lord's Prayer with the second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We weep because God's will is not yet done, because eternal life is delayed for us and we are not yet restored in God's creation. We long for that promised land where all is peace as the old spiritual sings. It calls us into being. The Beatitudes are not full of Christ's promises for what we will get. God doesn't venture into our own condition of rewarding our good behavior. If you'll just do your homework, you'll get some ice cream. If you just clean your room, if you'll just do this presentation that's not really part of your job, in fact, Christ tells us that that will not be the way at all. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Indeed, we may not be still and only wait for that reward, for we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. When we have seen God's kingdom, and we know that it is greater even than what we can imagine, we must be the light, God's light shining on the hilltop for all to see. We are called to live in this world as we have heard Christ's vision, as we have seen just a glimpse of what God created this world for, and we long for more. We get the picture. And as our community grows larger, as our voices together grow stronger, stronger, and as our song of God's kingdom on earth resonates for all to hear, we seek that promised land that can be. Amen? Amen. Amen.